Hello, this is Ryan from Recluse Audio. Today I'm going to differentiate and compare wavetable synthesizers and samplers. So what you just heard was an audio clip about 10 seconds in length. I recorded it on my Korg MS-20, right there, analog synthesizer. And you'll notice that over time it kind of transforms. I was playing with the filter, I was playing with the resonance, and I think that was it. But it changes quite a bit considering the ring modulation that was going on. And when you have a transformative sound like this, it can be really fun to load it up into a sampler or into a wavetable synthesizer. But what happens when you drag and drop in that audio clip or that audio file is very different. The way a wavetable synthesizer receives and creates wavetables from an audio file and the way a sampler manipulates the playback of that sample. Today I will place this clip in a wavetable synthesizer and a sampler, specifically from Ableton, to see how these tools help us play with the spectral continuity of an audio file, especially one made with an analog synthesizer. Samplers are used for the playback of an audio clip. They load audio files into a synthesizer, assigning it to a voice when a MIDI note is pressed, and play them back, scaling the playback rate based on what MIDI note was played. This allows a user to take a pitched sample and repitch it, making melodies with it or even playing it polyphonically. At their simplest, samplers are in a one-shot mode in which the sample is played from start to end and at the end of the sample the voice is released and it disappears into the ether. But they can also be set to loop in which it will keep going back and forth through the whole sample or more likely a section of the sample that the user has carefully curated. You can add fades and make it pretty smooth and it sounds like a continuous voice. This way you can have a sustaining synthesizer made from a sampler and it's just going to play that little section over and over. When working with a loop in a sampler, the user will slice and fade a particular section of the clip in order to minimize discontinuities and to evoke the idea of a continuous periodic waveform. In this method, they can nearly create a perfectly periodic waveform. Wavetable synthesizers are used for the playback of periodic waveforms. They load waveforms into a synthesizer and read them back on cue triggered by a MIDI note. The phase step is the rate at which the read position is incremented through the waveform. So as we get a higher pitch, the phase step will be larger and we will read through it faster, not dissimilar to the way we read through the sample faster in a sampler. but it's not the same. Wavetable synthesizers operate with periodic waveforms that have a very clear start and end and they are continuous and they can link together in perpetuity without a clip or a fade necessary to mask discontinuities. What's magical about wavetable synthesizers is that each waveform is like a spectrogram snapshot. Each waveform has its own unique harmonic coloration or inharmonic, that's when it gets juicy. It's not uncommon in a wavetable synthesizer to have a position parameter, a position within an array of waveforms, i.e. a table of them, a wavetable. We can slide through these different waveforms with different spectra, and we can experiment with those combinations.
They both receive an array of amplitude values or samples in the form of a WAV file, we'll say, or an Ableton Live clip, what have you. And they play back or they phase increment through these samples, these audio clips, these complex waveforms at a playback rate or a phase step based on the MIDI note played or whatever pitch they're trying to recreate. And these techniques seem interchangeable, but if we study them, we can at least appreciate the processing going on behind the scenes and how we get a sampler to work versus a wavetable synthesizer. If I drop a 10 second audio file into a sampler, it will load all 10 seconds. The voice playback, the waveform it will play back, will be that complete 10 seconds. I can select a smaller portion using loops and fades, but in principle, it's just gonna play the whole sample back. A lot of samplers require the user to enter a MIDI root note, so if, it, if you know the sample you brought in was a C2, you should put the MIDI root note as C2 and will correspond, it will pitch shift accordingly. But in this case, it would be the responsibility of the user to set the MIDI pitch correct. A wavetable synthesizer is not too different from a sampler. It could be thought of as a re-synthesis sampler or more likely just an automatic looping sampler. What do I mean by that? Well, in one case, a wavetable synthesizer, one that more a waveform generator that you can drag and drop an audio file, will do a pitch detection on that audio file. It uses pitch detection or spectral analysis to determine the fundamental frequency and magnitudes of various frequency bins to create a waveform according to the spectrum of a particular audio clip. There are several techniques for deriving a waveform from an audio clip. One might be to determine the fundamental frequency of that clip, and from that calculate the period in samples of that particular waveform. Any selection taken that is the period of the fundamental frequency will include the fundamental frequency, so essentially the lowest detectable frequency, and then all the cycles that occur within one period of that, i.e. the harmonic and inharmonic partials. This is a lot like a sampler, and a sampler, if you were to really narrow down and, s and select just one cycle of a waveform, and you could see where it was and see where it was kind of clicking, it would work. It would be the same thing as a wavetable synthesizer, albeit with just one waveform. Another option is to perform spectral analysis on the 10 second clip. In doing so, we're calculating magnitudes in frequency bins. So how much frequency energy, how much amplitude energy was at a given frequency or bin. The challenge with this is, is that it needs to be done at a discrete time interval, meaning a fit like every 2048 samples, we're gonna measure it because frequency unfolds over time. So we can't measure it, measure it sample by sample, we have to do it at a window of time. And to get good frequency resolution, we can't have good time domain resolution. But that's okay, because we're just deriving wave shapes from the harmonics and the spectra of that 10 second audio clip that does morph. The 10 second clip might be analyzed as 50 windows of frequency analysis with each window containing spectral information about a waveform. These waveforms might be created by adding sine waves corresponding with the magnitude and frequency of each bin. These waveforms can be arranged into an array and then used as a wavetable. Audio clips that transform in spectrum over time, be it through feedback, FM synthesis, any sort of parameter shaping, 
Those are the ones that are best for wavetable synthesis or generating wavetables. An audio clip that is stagnant will create a wavetable out of identical waveforms with no harmonic variation. Providing no purpose to sweep through a vector of them, you might as well just have one then. The real beauty occurs when the clip of audio mutates over time. So how are wavetables and samplers related? A sampler can, in effect, become a wavetable synthesizer. If we were to isolate exactly one sample, as I mentioned before, of the waveform and looped around it exactly at the zero crossings that correspond with zero and 360 degree phase, we could then set the MIDI root note to be equivalent to the period of that given frequency. This would in effect be one waveform, a single waveform a part of a wavetable, and the harmonic spectra of it would be exactly representative of the harmonic spectra occurring in that moment in time in that audio clip. Consider that mutating audio clip that is 10 seconds in length. Finding a perfect loop near the start will give us the harmonic spectra of that moment at the start of the clip. Then finding one at the end of the clip will have a different harmonic spectra as it brightens up and the uh, frequency cutoff slides up, rather. So this is possible to do. It's possible to kind of effectively make a waveform and find just one wave cycle with a sampler but it is clunky and it is certainly not the goal and the intended use of the device. A wavetable synth can become a sampler using simple pitch detection by dividing the clip into single cycle waveforms and simply playing them back in order. First, let's say the period's 1,024 samples and we get the next 1,024 samples and the next and the next and the next. It would be utterly pointless to do this because you're just playing the clip back then. More so what you'd want to do is sweep through them, generate through them, you can have an LFO go back and forth through it. There's a lot of fun things to do with an array of wavetables, of waveforms rather, a wavetable is an array of waveforms. And, and then if you did one for every period, really, it's probably going to be smaller than 1,024 samples. And if it's a 10 second audio clip, that's 480,000 samples, you're going to have hundreds of waveforms, too many. So in principle, they're similar, but in practice, they're totally different. If it were to process an audio clip with FFT and arrange the resynthesized waveforms according to the timeline, we would see a similar result. At each window length and samples, we would get a waveform that is perfectly continuous, perfectly cyclical, and represents the spectrum of that given moment quite well. That moment being the window length and samples but the time resolution would be limited to the window length, making the transition between each window of time a bit abrupt and obfuscating those tiny harmonic shifts that characterize sonically rich sounds, especially those that occur on timescales smaller than the window size, which do exist, especially with an analog synthesizer. Samplers leave the spectrum more of a mystery. Loops can be made to isolate sections of a clip and to highlight the spectrum at a given moment. But the time scale of these loops mean the looping section often includes spectral transformations that when repeated can create strange artifacts that you couldn't really do programmatically. If the user wants to show off a particular shift or wobble that happens in an audio clip, they need to find the actual section in that audio clip at which it occurs and we can only really blend it with other things it was touching within the audio clip. You can only morph from second nine to second 10 and, and to second eight. You can't go nine, one, five, three, six, jump around. Whereas a wavetable, you can do that, but it would be a much clunkier representation of those complex harmonic states. You know, we're taking a continuous number of those harmonic states from the audio clip and then breaking it into discrete windowed analyses of those harmonic states. Wavetables break up audio clips into discrete measures of spectral energy, windows. By arranging waveforms by spectral energy, a user might morph the spectrum of a non-contiguous window. 
So we could take window zero, the first one, and then window nine, and then window three and blend between those, which we couldn't do with the sampler, so we had three of them going at once. Where the sampler could only play back a transformation in spectra as it occurred in the clip, a wavetable synth has made it possible to interpolate between many of the windows spectrum, regardless of where it was taken from. I'm reading the script because I just want to make sure I get this right. This added control comes at a cost of time resolution, as I mentioned, and we stand to lose those tiny transformations in spectrum that occur on time scales smaller than the window. So I would encourage you to take an audio file and drop it in your favorite sampler and drop it in your favorite wavetable synthesizer and see how they handle those differently and see what you can do with one that you can't do with the other and see if you can do the same thing with both of them too. It's a really good way to have unexpected results. So, thank you for watching.